It's Wednesday Wonders, science fiction and fantasy on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. Welcome to Chronosphere Fiction. This is your host, Daniel French, bringing you the prologue to what will be the most unique zombie story you've ever heard. And now, with great pleasure, I present Generation Z. Hi, my name's Kevin. I'm 17, or at least my body's 17. After all, you don't age when you're dead. Oh, did I mention I'm a zombie? Yeah, I'm a zombie. Or undead American, if you prefer. Some folks don't like the connotations of the phrase zombie or the association with voodoo or something, but I don't really care. Anyway, yeah, being a zombie's okay. I remember the outbreak. By the way, we call it a zombie outbreak or a zombie transition, not a zombie apocalypse. That's kind of a narrow-minded way of looking at it, don't you think? I mean, did Neanderthals start talking about apocalypses and arm themselves with shotguns and chainsaws and stuff when Homo sapiens started displacing them? No. I don't think that's really any different. The world isn't coming to an end or anything, it's just, well, changing hands in a way. One dominant species takes over after another dies out. That's the way it's been for, like, billions of years. This is just a new chapter. Sorry, I'm kind of trailing off. So yeah, the outbreak. Some people say it was kind of a space meteor carrying some alien virus. Other folks talk about, like, monkeys that we were experimenting on, but we're all pretty sure it was just this new fertilizer that got by the FDA somehow. I mean, who really cares? Did anybody think that in a few months' time we'd all be zombies? Probably not. Pretty crazy stuff. Right now, I'd like to clear one thing up. We don't eat brains. That's a negative stereotype perpetuated by some insensitive movies. I mean, do you even know how hard it is to get to somebody's brain? The skull isn't that easy a thing to bust through, you know? It's not like a walnut. Plus, raw brains taste about as good as raw anything else. Not for me. We're clinically dead, so we don't actually have to eat anything. But of course, some a-holes were just like, Oh hey, I'm a zombie now. Guess I should start eating people. Leave it to a couple of guys to ruin it for everyone else, right? Yeah, it's true. A lot of us zombies behave kind of aggressively. I mean, it was a confusing time for all of us. You wake up and you're all pale all of a sudden. You've got no pulse. It's a little disturbing. Not the easiest thing to accept. A lot of us just sort of assumed that there wasn't anything more to life or death than taking bites out of random people walking down the street. It was just like what was expected of us as zombies, you know? Everybody needs an identity. And then there were all these slurs like Deadite, Walker, you've probably heard them. Really demeaning stuff. That made some zombies angry, and they were like, oh, oh, you think it's so easy? Well, here. And then they'd give him a little bite on the shoulder. Doesn't take much. It all happened really, really fast. Like, faster than anyone could deal with. Faster than even the government could respond to. It was a really confusing time. After a certain point, lots of us were choosing to be carriers, just so we could be like our loved ones who already had it. I mean, it didn't really seem all that bad. You weren't some drooling, ambling, fucked up weirdo hungering for human flesh. You were just dead. I mean, if every one of your friends and relatives were dead, like undead, and they were going to be around forever, you'd join them, wouldn't you? In just a week or two, the majority of the Earth's population was turned. Any notion of stopping it, reversing it, or even fighting back was kind of out of the question. The grassroots zombie rights movement had gained the upper hand. And honestly, there were plenty of folks who seemed to find zombiehood pretty appealing. You never die of old age. You stop getting older. 
No hunger or pain or anything. Heck, it sounded like a total paradise for some of us. But, well, everything's got its pros and cons. Apparently one lady was so depressed when she realized she was one of us that she was technically dead. She tried throwing herself off the top of a building. Don't know what she was trying to accomplish. She really came to regret that, all the little bits and pieces of her. I think her head is currently on a speaking tour about zombie self-acceptance. Because, don't get me wrong, it is something you've got to learn to live with, like adapt to. It's kind of like puberty times ten or something. Get used to being weirdly numb and don't expect any more warm hugs or warm handshakes or warm anything. Also, sleep isn't really a thing anymore. But don't think that gives you a free pass on physical activity. You wear yourself out and you'll come to pieces just as quickly as that lady did. Not fun. The bug infestations were pretty nasty for a while, but they made stuff for that. How do pesticide injections sound? Yeah. All the existential, philosophical questions about living forever are sort of immaterial. We do have plenty of time to think them over, but that doesn't stop folks from having occasional breakdowns over it. Posthumous denial disorder, they call it. It's really hard for some people. Too bad. Well, they'll come around eventually, right? By the way, there are still living, breathing humans. Not too many, all in all, but they're still around. Zombie officials recognized fairly early on the right of the living to opt out of the transition. It wasn't hard to relate to the desire to stay alive, and it was all they knew, anyway. At least if we gave them rights, they'd stop attacking us with their crossbows and flamethrowers and stuff. It was crazy, some of the stuff they did. We just want to get by, live out the afterlife in peace. Yeesh. They act like it's the, I don't know, the apocalypse. But anyway, all the violence cooled down and now there are designated living zones in some cities and countries. Things work out. I gotta say though, there's still a lot of uncalled for necrophobia from them. When they visit dead zones, they always wear face masks. Everyone knows that it isn't airborne, and they aren't the least bit friendly. You try and walk up to one and say, Hi, how are you? And they'll jump back and start yelling at you. Get away, get away! It's not polite. It's not neighborly or empathetic. It's just bullshit. Kind of makes you want to sink your teeth in him. But that'll lend you in some deep shit nowadays. They don't even allow us in the living zones. For a couple of years, they've talked about issuing visitors passes, you know, to reunite families separated by the transition and stuff, but it never happens. The living don't want us anywhere near them. Kind of weird, isn't it? For thousands of years, humans respected the dead. They visit their burial places and make sacrifices. They say they'd give anything to have their late father or uncle or cousin or whatever back. Then, boom, death becomes like a normal thing, and they change their tune. Pretty hypocritical, if you ask me. But I don't want to get caught up on them. They're like 7% of the Earth's population now. Zombies have accomplished more than they ever did, and in no time at all. Just by existing, we got rid of world hunger, and when death and pain aren't part of the deal, poverty isn't quite as bad as it seemed. It was like, no more need. No more suffering. For a while, it really did seem like some kind of utopia. A paradise. Like they said, where you just never died, never got old, and the people close to you never died. Everything was just great. But the zeitgeist wore off. Always does. It became apparent pretty quickly that being dead meant any cut or wound you got wasn't going to heal. Ever. Paper cut? Congrats, it'll be there forever. Tripped and scabbed your knee? Get used to that big ugly blotch, because it isn't going anywhere. And broken bones? They never mend. I think by now just about everybody has got a private collection of stitches, staples, and bandages. Some of us look more like mummies than zombies at this point. Still, could be worse. All the poor saps who get mangled in car accidents are just going to be shambling, gory, broken monstrosities forever. Unless they choose cremation. So yeah, there is a way for us to, well, not die really, but leave the world behind. Reducing a zombie to ashes means death, in like a more final sense of the word. This option is open to everyone. We can leave when we want, for any reason. Maybe we lost a few too many limbs, and it's just not working out anymore. Maybe we're just sick of hanging around and waiting for eternity to go by. Whatever. I think more people would probably bow out if they weren't afraid of finding out what's on the other side. I mean, we already died. 
So who the hell knows what's in the after afterlife? Kind of weird how even dying didn't make us any less afraid of, well, dying. Anyway, you'd think that everything would be great with no more pain or need or stuff. Like, we'd all be able to get along for the first time in history. But I guess some people are never satisfied. Seriously, some assholes go around with, like, guns and bats, fucking up zombies just for fun. <laughs> like, they'll sneak up on somebody and literally take their legs right out from under them. What the fuck is that? I mean, yeah, they technically aren't hurting anybody, but existing indefinitely without legs or with a big hole in your forehead is pretty shitty. Unfortunately, zombie-on-zombie -zombie violence is a common occurrence. People just do it for kicks, because I guess they think there are no consequences when you and everyone else is dead. But nobody wants to get maimed, and when every little mark sticks with you, it can make you a little paranoid just walking around. We're like fragile china dolls or something. And if that wasn't bad enough, you'd think there would be at least no more war, right? Like, what's even worth fighting over? Sure enough, the zombified nations of the world found something else. See, there's been a lot of contention over the treatment of the living. In the Far East, they wanted to turn absolutely everybody, leave nobody alive. They wanted a unified, undead society. As you can imagine, living rights activists weren't going to have this. I mean, the living are basically an endangered species. <laughs> so before you know it, Everybody everywhere is fighting to save the living or get rid of them or to straight up eat them for, I don't know, symbolic reasons. We can't agree on anything. And you thought wars were pointless and inconclusive before? Imagine a battle in which neither army can actually kill the other. <laughs> Eventually you're just left with a field of assorted squirming body parts. Kind of pathetic, really. Also, all those like stupid regional conflicts are still going on. The Palestinian zombies still fight the Israeli zombies. The Swedish zombies still don't like the Norwegian zombies. Zombies in North Dakota still hate the zombies in South Dakota. I guess old habits die hard. Another thing. You might expect there wouldn't be a need for money anymore, since, like, no one needed food, water, shelter. Heck, even clothes, when you think about it. Why pay for school when you had all the time in the world to learn whatever you wanted? Why buy a car when you could just walk anywhere without sleeping or getting tired? Yeah, another novelty that wore off pretty fast. I mean, there's always something to buy, right? All it took was some time for the markets to adjust, and like nothing ever happened. You suddenly have a whole consumerist economy geared at zombies. Even death doesn't put a damper on entrepreneurship. Now you can find embalming spas on every corner, bandage dispensers, all kinds of stuff. Ice is a staple product. Most of us sleep on beds of it, you know, to stay fresh. You can even buy and sell limbs and digits and things. They attach them to you right in the store. I remember when having three arms was a fashion statement, but that went out right around the time wrist fingers were cool. Also, you'll find a lot of electro cafes. Nothing perks you up and nothing gets you going like a good electrical current running through you. I'm sorry to say that employers have taken full advantage of their workers' new features, Wages plummeted when people figured out that we'd all stopped feeling fatigue and needing sleep. Hours got longer. Now you have to be willing to work like 20 hours a day just to get your foot in the door at most places. And don't expect a raise for the first few decades. Now that life expectancy has been abolished, everybody thinks in the long, long, long term, for better or worse. Don't think you'll be too surprised to know that one of the things you're always struggling against is boredom. Being dead has a weird way of sucking all the excitement out of life. If you've got time to, like, theoretically do anything you want, sometimes you don't feel motivated to do anything at all. There isn't much, I don't know, pleasure anymore. I think everybody in the freaking world ran out of things to talk about like 10 years ago. It's this sense of permanence it makes people sort of apathetic. I admit, it is kind of dull sometimes, but we have enough fun, I guess. We've still got entertainment and stuff like TV and movies, music. Most of it about zombies, of course. I guess they're slowly kind of helping people acclimate to their zombie identity. One thing I can say is that there's a strong sense of community. We've all got this sense that, like, we're all in this together. There's no zombie reproduction. No new zombie babies. That solves overpopulation, but it also means we're stuck with each other forever, in a manner of speaking. We're all exploring time. Endlessly. With no limit to what we can learn and understand and discover as millennia pass. So that's pretty cool, I think. So, all in all, I guess being a zombie isn't too bad. It's slow, simple, but it's okay. 
The other night I sat down in the dining room with my family at midnight and we watched Stephen Colbert's trillionth episode and it made me think about, I don't know, the endurance of humanity. If that doesn't sound too stupid. Any day you could walk down the street and see two young zombies on a bench kissing and holding hands, a line around the block for the next iPhone a few months in advance, some kind old zombie feeding zombie pigeons, and you know it can all go on forever and ever. That's the way it was yesterday. That's the way it'll be tomorrow. That's how it'll be 50 years from now. That's something. Kind of even gives me a warm feeling. The living, you know, they still like to look down their noses at us, but when you get down to it, we're not really that different, are we? Generation Z is written by Blake Benlin. Kevin is played by Will Geary. Production, Daniel French. Before I say goodbye, let me recommend to you another podcast. The Lift Game is a conversational improv game. Each of our panel members has a list of topics and or phrases that were drawn from the chicken hat. Their goal is to sneak those topics and phrases into the conversation with a tangent. Another member of the panel can call you out saying that's on your list. If they're right, they get a point. If you bluffed or if they're just wrong, you get a point. Catch The Lift Game wherever you listen to podcasts. And that brings us to the end of another episode of Chronosphere Fiction. Until next time, keep your cosmos clean. Do not adjust your sets. You're tuned to Wednesday Wonders on the Mutual Audio Network. Tomorrow on Mutual is Thursday Thrillers, our roundup of action, adventure, mystery, crime drama, and thrillers, of course. Subscribe to the full Mutual Audio Network feed for every day of diverse audio tales. Or find the Thursday Thrillers feed in your favorite podcast players. The Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together.